Utah earthquake shocked scientists. What they're finding is rewriting everything we know about this region. On September 10th, a magnitude 4.1 earthquake struck near Vernal at an impossible depth of 68 kilometers, deeper than Utah's crust should ever allow. More than 150 people felt the jolt, but experts are reeling because the quake came from the upper mantle, where earthquakes just aren't supposed to happen. To make matters stranger, this was a reverse fault in land known for pulling apart. The crust wasn't stretching, it was being crushed by something unknown miles beneath the Rockies. Why is the ground behaving as if Utah has suddenly moved to the Himalayas? Scientists are scrambling for answers, and what they uncover could threaten everything we assumed was stable. What is happening under Utah, and is this just the start? Digital records from the University of Utah seismograph stations tell the story in numbers. At 3.14 a.m. Mountain Time, instruments across the region registered a sudden spike, magnitude 4.1, centered at 40.48 degrees north, 109.705 degrees west. The epicenter sat just west of Vernal, Utah, near the small community of Maser. But the real shock came from the depth reading, 68 kilometers below the surface, more than 40 miles down. That's not just beneath the crust, it's well into the upper mantle, a place where earthquakes in Utah aren't supposed to begin. Seismic stations, both broadband and short period, confirm the numbers. The waveform traces show a crisp, unmistakable arrival of primary and secondary waves fanning out from deep underground. Analysts reviewed the depth calculation, cross-checking arrival times from dozens of stations. No errors surfaced, the depth held steady, 68 kilometers. For reference, the crust in this part of Utah is only about 40 to 45 kilometers thick. Anything deeper means the rupture started in solid mantle rock, not the brittle layers geologists expect to fail. The event's magnitude, while moderate, stands out because of what followed. Over 180 people reported feeling the quake on the USGS Did You Feel It map. That's not typical for a tremor this deep. Usually, the energy from such an event would fade long before reaching the surface. Instead, residents described a short, sharp jolt, enough to rattle windows and nerves alike. The shaking was brief, but it traveled farther than science predicts for a quake with these characteristics. Sensor data paints a picture of an earthquake that doesn't fit the local playbook. The focal mechanism calculated from the seismic waveforms, points to reverse faulting, compression, rather than the extension Utah is famous for. On paper, the crust here should be stretching, not squeezing. Yet the data is clear. Compressive forces drove rock upward, deep in the mantle, at a spot where geologists have never mapped an active reverse fault. Network coverage in the Uinta Basin is dense, designed to track even minor quakes. This event lit up the grid, triggering automated alerts and manual reviews. The phase arrivals, the timing of PNS waves at each station, lined up with a source far below the crust. Uncertainty estimates were low enough for seismologists to stand by the depth, even after rigorous review. No aftershocks registered in the hours that followed, and no surface faulting was detected. The quake left only a digital fingerprint and a wave of confusion among those who study the Earth's hidden movements. As the dust settled, the data stood unchallenged. A 4.1 magnitude event centered near Vernal, Utah, at a depth that defies local geology. The numbers leave no doubt. Something powerful moved in the upper mantle, compressing rock in a place where earthquakes are supposed to be impossible. The next question is as simple as it is unsettling. What could drive such a rupture, so deep beneath Utah's ancient stable ground? Sean Wilsey, a geologist known for dissecting seismic puzzles, sat down with the event's waveform data and felt a chill. He's used to seeing Utah's earthquakes break the rules, but this one seemed to rip up the rulebook entirely. The focal mechanism, reverse faulting, not the usual stretching, jumped out from the seismic plots. 
In a state shaped by extension, where the crust pulls apart and valleys widen, compression should be a rare visitor. Yet the evidence was plain. Deep in the mantle, rock was being squeezed, not pulled. Wilsey's first reaction was disbelief. He checked the depth calculation, then checked again. The crust in this part of Utah doesn't even reach 68 kilometers. Any rupture at that depth has to be in mantle rock, at temperatures close to 1,000 degrees Celsius. Under those conditions, rocks should flow like warm wax, not snap with the violence of an earthquake. I thought it was an error, he admitted in a public analysis. I kept looking for a mistake in the data. But the numbers held, confirmed by independent reviews from University of Utah and USGS seismologists. What made the event even stranger was the human response. Over 150 people filed felt reports, describing a sharp, unmistakable jolt in the middle of the night. For a quake starting so deep, the energy should have been swallowed by the layers above, never making it to the surface with this kind of clarity. Instead, the shaking was enough to rattle dishes and wake residents across the Uinta Basin. Wilsey pointed out how rare this is, especially for earthquakes that don't fit the regional pattern. You might expect a shallow event to be felt widely, but this broke expectations in every way, he said, his voice tight with concern. Among his peers, the event set off a flurry of late-night messages and emergency review sessions. The reverse mechanism, the depth, the felt intensity, all pointed to something happening far below that defied the models. Wilsey's credibility as a public analyst added weight to the growing unease. If the data was right, the quake wasn't just an oddity. It was a warning that the ground beneath Utah may be less predictable and more restless than anyone had guessed. As Wilsey and his colleagues pored over the waveforms, the tension was palpable. Every earthquake has a story, he reminded viewers, but some stories leave more questions than answers. The Vernal event had scientists questioning the very foundations of what they thought they knew about the region's geology. The numbers were real, the mechanism confirmed, and the impact felt. What remained was a sense of unease, a recognition that the Earth can still surprise even those who spend their lives studying its secrets. Beneath the rolling hills and broad plateaus of northeastern Utah lies one of the oldest pieces of the continent, the Wyoming Craton. For more than two billion years, this block of ancient rock has stood as the geological backbone of the region. Cratons like this are the survivors of Earth's earliest chaos, stubborn, cold, and unyielding. Their reputation is built on stability. In textbooks and lecture halls, they're described as the Earth's roots, thick, rigid, and immune to the restless forces that shape younger, weaker crust. The Wyoming Craton, stretching from central Wyoming into northern Utah, is a classic example. Its base plunges deep into the mantle, forming a keel that has weathered supercontinents, ice ages, and the slow drift of tectonic plates. Dr. Brooks, a structural geologist who spent decades mapping the edges of this craton, puts it simply, if you want to see the Earth at its most stubborn, look here. These rocks haven't budged in a billion years. The expectation is almost dogmatic. Cratons are not supposed to move. They resist earthquakes, absorb the strain of distant collisions, and shrug off the stretching and squeezing that rip apart more active regions. Even as the basin and range to the west pulls itself apart and the Rocky Mountains rise and fall, the Craton's margin is supposed to be the immovable anchor. This faith in stability has shaped everything from seismic hazard maps to oil and gas exploration. Engineers place pipelines and storage tanks here, counting on the ground to stay quiet. Emergency planners focus attention elsewhere, on the Wasatch Fault or the margins of the Great Basin. The assumption is clear. The Craton is safe. The Craton is silent. But this confidence comes with a blind spot. The very age and rigidity that make Cratons seem unshakable also make them mysterious. Their interiors are rarely studied with the same intensity as active fault zones. Dr. Brooks admits, we don't put as many instruments here. We don't expect surprises. 
Most seismic networks are designed to catch shallow tremors or slip along known faults, not deep movement in the ancient mantle. The belief in cratonic stability is so strong that even small anomalies are often dismissed as noise or error. Now, with a confirmed earthquake starting deep within the craton's mantle, the old assumptions no longer hold. The ground that was supposed to be stable has sent a message, one that scientists weren't prepared to hear. The Wyoming Craton's margin may not be as immune to change as generations of geologists believed. If the rules can be broken here, what else have we been missing beneath the world's so-called stable cores? Patterns in earthquake catalogs rarely announce themselves with fanfare. Sometimes, the only hint is a data point that refuses to fade into the background. In March 2020, just four miles from the recent Vernal epicenter, another deep event rattled the scientific community. A magnitude 3.7 quake, its source traced to 56 kilometers beneath the surface. That rupture too broke the rules, far below the crust in mantle rock thought to be immune to brittle failure. At the time, the anomaly was noted, cataloged, and debated in technical circles, but with no aftershocks and no surface disruption, it was easy to treat as a fluke. Now, with two deep quakes in the same patch of ancient ground, separated by only five years and a handful of miles, the odds of coincidence shrink. The 2025 Vernal earthquake is not an isolated glitch. It's the second entry in a pattern that can't be ignored. Both events share the same defiance of local geology. Reverse faulting in a region defined by extension, rupture in mantle rock beneath a craton's edge, and a silence after the main shock. No aftershocks, no foreshocks, just a single, clean break. Seismic catalogs from the University of Utah and USGS show a gap where aftershocks should be. In California, a quake like this would unleash a swarm of smaller tremors, painting a vivid afterimage of the fault's movement. Here, the deep mantle stays quiet. The absence is as telling as the event itself. Each time, agencies combed through the data, searching for hidden clusters or microquakes that might explain the main event. The catalogs came up empty. For researchers, these twin anomalies have become a rallying point. The lack of aftershocks, the depth, the repeated location, each fact adds urgency. What mechanism could trigger not one, but two mantle earthquakes in a region considered geologically dormant? The catalog visuals, once a comfort, now serve as a warning. The earth beneath Utah is writing a new chapter, and the old models offer no answers. The search for a cause is no longer academic. With each deep event, the stakes rise, and the scientific agenda sharpens. The next step is clear. Understanding what force is at work and whether it's only just begun to make itself known. Dr. Miguel Rojas, a mantle geochemist who models deep earthquake scenarios, leans into the data with a hypothesis that's as unsettling as it is intriguing. He points to the legacy of the Farallon Plate, a vast oceanic slab that vanished beneath North America millions of years ago. According to Rojas, remnants of this ancient plate still lurk far beneath Utah, releasing fluids into the upper mantle. These fluids, he explains, act like a chemical crowbar, prying open weaknesses in rock that should, by all rights, be unbreakable. The chemistry is anything but abstract. Water, even in trace amounts, changes everything at depth. In laboratory experiments, olivine, the green mineral that dominates the upper mantle, becomes dramatically weaker when exposed to fluids. It can slip, deform, even fracture at temperatures and pressures that would normally force it to flow silently, without a quake. Rojas describes it simply. Introduce water, and you lower the breaking point. Suddenly, rocks that should bend start to snap. He sketches out the possible journey of these fluids. They might travel upward along invisible pathways, squeezed from the ancient Farallon slab as it slowly breaks down. Once they reach the base of the Wyoming Craton, pockets of pressurized water could collect along old scars or mineral boundaries. Under the crushing weight of 68 kilometers of rock, even a tiny bit of fluid can make a difference. The result, a brittle rupture, deep in the mantle, where earthquakes should be impossible. 
but the theory has its skeptics. Magnetotelluric surveys and seismic imaging in this part of Utah haven't found the telltale signs of widespread mantle hydration. The region's mantle remains stubbornly dry in most models. Still, Rojas argues, the absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. He points to other places where deep earthquakes have been traced to hidden fluid pathways, only discovered after the fact. The Vernal event, he suggests, might be Utah's first clue that the Farallon's ghost is still at work, weakening the Earth from below. If fluids are the culprit, their chemical fingerprints should linger in future seismic data, waiting for the next scientist bold enough to look. Thermal runaway. It sounds like a technical footnote, but for emergency managers in Utah, it's now a watchword. The science behind this deep earthquake points to a rupture that released its energy not in a sharp snap, but in a slow, smoldering burn. Most of the force lost to heat, not shaking. That's what waveform analysis predicts for events at 68 kilometers. Long source durations, low corner frequencies, and a moment rate function that spreads out like a slow fuse. The seismic fingerprint left behind tells experts this was no ordinary quake. The energy that reached the surface was only a fraction of what moved deep underground. In practical terms, that means traditional hazard models, built for shallow, brittle faults, might underestimate the risk from future deep events. For Lisa Chen, the state's director of emergency management, the lesson is clear. We can't afford to treat these as flukes, she says, voice steady but urgent. Every anomaly is a test of our preparedness. Her team has already flagged the vernal event in their incident logs, triggering a review of communication protocols and public alert systems. Chen points to the felt reports. Over 150 people jolted awake by a quake that, by all expectations, should have been silent. That kind of surface impact, from that kind of depth, is a warning shot. It means the old playbook, focus on known faults, shallow shaking, predictable patterns, isn't enough anymore. Policy meetings in Salt Lake City have shifted tone. Agencies are pushing for denser seismic arrays, real-time waveform analysis, and new thresholds for flagging deep events. The goal? Catch the next anomaly before it catches them off guard. Chen's office is working with scientists to translate waveform fingerprints into actionable alerts. If the data shows a slow, inefficient rupture at depth, it now triggers a review, even if the magnitude seems modest. The stakes are no longer just academic. Every deep event is a stress test for the region's readiness. In Utah, the ground beneath the surface is no longer just a backdrop. It's an active player in the safety of millions. On September 10, 2025, a 4.1 magnitude earthquake struck west of Vernal, Utah at a depth of 68 kilometers, far deeper than typical for this stable region. Scientists confirm the quake's reverse fault mechanism, a direct contradiction to the extensional tectonics expected here. This is not the first time. A similar deep quake occurred nearby in 2020, suggesting a pattern that challenges long-held beliefs about the Wyoming Creighton's stability. Despite thorough waveform analysis and review of USGS and University of Utah records, the exact cause remains unresolved. Evidence points to possible influence from ancient Farallon plate fluids, yet no published study confirms their presence beneath the Uinta Basin. Emergency teams continue to monitor the region, but the reality is stark. Earthquakes at these depths in Utah are rare, and their mechanisms remain under debate. What happened beneath Utah is rewriting scientific assumptions, proof that even the oldest rocks can still surprise us.